An important class of problems are so-called network flow problems. They are important because many variants of network flow problems can neatly be solved and many problems can be interpreted as being a network flow problem. In this video we will study some basic ideas of modeling network flow problems. As an example, we consider the so-called min-cost network flow problem that is illustrated here. In a network we have nodes and arcs. Arcs are links between nodes with a certain orientation. You can think of these networks as being transportation networks where arcs are pathways along which we can travel to transport something from one node to the other. But this is just a very obvious interpretation. In some settings a problem can be viewed as a network flow problem although the original problem has absolutely nothing to do with transporting goods. But let's not confuse ourselves and consider the network as being a network of pipelines through which some fluid can be transported in the direction that is indicated by the arcs. It is helpful to consider a fluid because we'll assume that quantities can be split arbitrarily. Attached to each arc is a weight that represents a per unit cost for transportation. In a network flow problem as considered here we have three types of nodes. First there are so-called sources. A source can be considered as an entry point where the fluid that is to be transported enters the transportation network. The amount that is fed into the network is indicated by a positive number in our example. As you can see nodes 1 and 2 are sources. In our context the supply of a source node is a parameter. Second there are so-called sinks. A sink is an exit point that can be seen as a point of demand. It's common practice to denote the demand by negative numbers so that demand and supply can be discriminated. In our example nodes 5 and 6 are sinks. In our context the demand is considered to be a parameter. And third there are intermediate nodes without supply and without demand. Nodes 3 and 4 are intermediate nodes in our example. To keep things simple we assume that the total supply equals the total demand. If this is not the case dummy nodes can be introduced so that our assumption is without loss of generality. For each source we must decide which things should receive delivery from that source, how many units are to be delivered and along which arcs the delivery is routed. All demand is to be met. Our objective is to minimize the total transportation cost. You should try to model this problem by yourself. Please pause the video now. To model the problem it's convenient to introduce a decision variable fij that represents the amount that is transported along the arc from node i to node j. The value of fij is known as the flow from node i to node j. Nodes are numbered from 1 to n. Let capital E be the set of arcs in our network represented by pairs of nodes. Cij be the per unit transportation cost on the arcs and Bi be the weight attached to each node. Recall that Bi greater than 0 indicates a source, Bi less than 0 indicates a sink and Bi equal to 0 indicates an intermediate node. A possible model formulation for the min cost network flow problem looks like this. As said before the objective is to minimize the total transportation cost. The most interesting part of this model are the constraints. They simply state that for each node i the outflow from that node minus the inflow to that node must be equal to the node weight. 
These constraints are also called flow balance constraints. And finally, flows must not be negative. This basic problem can of course be extended. Very often you'll see that the flow on each arc is limited for example. A few special cases of the min-cost network flow problem should be mentioned. First there is the transportation problem which was already discussed in a previous video. The transportation problem has no intermediate nodes and arcs point from sources to sinks. A special case of the transportation problem is the assignment problem. The assignment problem is a transportation problem where all supplies as well as all demands are equal to 1. And finally we have the shortest path problem. A network flow problem with a single source with supply 1 and a single sink with demand 1. Arc weights would usually be interpreted as distances.